When you watch a film, are you active or passive? Do you engage it with your brain, with your imagination, or do you let it all wash over you? I'm not against passive watching. Films are for entertainment, and we all lead hard lives. But films are for stimulation as well, and this is where my book comes in. The title of my book is Film Past, Film Future. We've been given free will and we need to use it when we watch a film. Ask yourself, why is that particular shot where it is? Why is it being filmed in that particular way? Would it be better with music? Would it be better without music? As you watch, there are dozens of questions to ask. That quickfire extract poses questions like how are these images shot? Why are they in that particular sequence? How do they connect with each other and with the viewer? And so on. It feels like the elements are being manipulated and the viewer too. But there is a cinema of observation as well. While you're observing, let me tell you that the book is in two parts. The first is about content. What does the cinema like to portray? In one word, thrills. Of sex, violence, the subconscious, suspense. Films are good at battle too and I include a chapter on cinema and the Holocaust. Part two looks at how films exercise our imagination through performance but also through editing, camera work, set design and so on. Recently films have become hyperbolic so I compare classical with mannerist cinema and I end with speculation on what conditions might exist for an equivalent to Shakespeare to emerge in global cinema. So here are some film stills to give you some idea of the range of films covered. Part one is about content with suspense to the fore. What happens next, for example, in Lord of the Rings or in Hitchcock's Saboteur? The pianist has suspense of a different kind. We know the pianist survives. The suspense is in the how. Next, the erotic. Compare the overtly erotic in Louis Malle's Les Amants with the covertly erotic in Karl Dreyer's Gertrude after sex, violence, family violence in Anthony Mann's The Man from Laramie, biblical levels of violence in Eastwood's Unforgiven, real gangsters in Hawks's Scarface, a pretend gangster in Goddard's Breathless. Film is good at battle, whether grim in the German version of All Quiet on the Western Front, epic in the Soviet War and Peace, 
both subtle and intimate in A Walk in the Sun, overblown but still powerful in the thin red line. I have a long chapter on cinema and the Holocaust, covering a lot of films, including Schindler's List, Lanzmann's massive Shoah, and also Edgar Wright's Die Zweite Heimat, a fascinating exploration of 1960s Germany and its dark past a generation earlier. In part two, I cover how films engage their audience. I talk about performance, obviously. For example, Falconetti in The Passion of Joan of Arc. Robert Bresson's involuntary expressive and then the voluntarily inexpressive Lino Ventura in Second Breath, Sarah Pickering in Christina Edzard's Little Dorrit, Ethan Hawke and Julie Delpy in The Conversation film. Next comes ways of telling stories, cross-cutting in Griffith's Intolerance. Only Angels Have Wings is an action film made in the studio. There is Eric Romer's marvellous evocation of the French Revolution. There is the psychodrama of the small back room and a life forwards to a tragic outcome in the life of Oharu and a film going backwards in Memento. Time is of the essence in the cinema. Time Regained draws on Marcel Proust. Remembrance of things past comes in Ray's The Music Room. An unfulfilled future comes in Antonioni's Leclis. Multiple futures are shown in Kieslowski's Blind Chance, and David Lean's The Passionate Friends is a marvellous what-if film. The book compares two examples of the cinema of hyperbole, Hollywood's The Road to Perdition and the Russian film The Return. Finally, how do you show the inner mind? Well, in Psycho, Norman Bates's favourite music is Beethoven's Eroica Symphony. So buy this book. You can download it to your Kindle or whatever digital device you use. It's only £1.50 in the UK, under $3 in the USA, and €3.75 in the Eurozone. Go on, buy the book and light yourself a candle.